These days, most people know at least a bit about North Korea. Put simply, it's ruled by a dictator who subjugates its people and isolates its country from the rest of the world. Its leaders have cults of personalities established around them, the government censors all media, and elections, if you can even call it that, are completely rigged for one party. Speaking out against the government is a definite way to go directly to jail, or worse, land on boardwalk with someone else's hotel built, aka death. Anyways, point is, everyone pretty much knows about North Korea and the hell on earth that it is, but almost no one knows about the other countries in this world that are essentially copies of North Korea. So with that being said, here are three other North Koreas that exist today. We'll start with Turkmenistan, a country that is so obscure to most people it can sound like I just made it up by combining Turkey and Afghanistan together. Which honestly it kind of works to think of it that way, where, like Turkey, the people are Turkic and speak a Turkic language and like Afghanistan, ever since the Taliban took over in 2021, its government is a non-democratic, totalitarian dictatorship. Ever since the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Turkmenistan has been ruled by a series of dictators that have each planted their own cult of personality into its people. Here's a rule of thumb to tell if your country's like North Korea. If you have gold statues of your leaders everywhere, while a large part of your population lives in poverty. If you have titles for your leaders like Father of All Turkmens or Protector of the Turkmens. If your leader changed the names of each month to include his own name and even his mother's name. If your leader banned video games, karaoke, long hair and beards for men, and even dogs. If every single citizen received a watch with a picture of your leader for New Year's Eve. Okay, this last one's actually kind of cool. But you get my point. A North Korean could come to Turkmenistan, switch the name of Kim Jong-un to... however the hell this is pronounced, and feel right at home. Eritrea is one of those countries that you probably correctly guessed was in Africa. But you probably don't know where in Africa it actually is. And that's totally understandable because just like Turkmenistan, the country is actually relatively new, only gaining its independence in 1993. A unique fact of Eritrea is that it's one of the few countries on earth with basically a 50-50 split between Christians and Muslims. So I guess they have that going for them. Anyways, Ever since he led Eritrea to independence 30 years ago, Isaias Afwerki has been the sole dictator of the country to this day, and Eritrea has never had an election, constitution, or even published a budget in its existence. It was ranked dead last in terms of freedom of the press and is the sole country in Africa to only have government-run news media. It's been credibly accused of extrajudicial executions, torture, forced labor, indefinitely long military conscription. I think you get the point. In 2008, Isaias was asked if elections would ever happen, and he responded, Eritrea will wait three or four decades, maybe more, before it holds elections. Who knows? I did the math, and that would make him anywhere between 92 to 102 years old before he steps down to hold elections. This man really said, yeah, maybe when I'm a hundred. And in case you might have thought he said that by accident, no. Two years later, he literally said the exact same thing. So until then, Eritrea is most definitely on the list of the other North Koreas in the world. Okay, I don't have an ad or anything in the middle of this video, but I just wanted to shamelessly beg for your like because it really helps me see that there are people who actually enjoy these videos and that really, really encourages me to make more videos like this in the future. Thanks. On paper, Cuba is probably the closest country to North Korea than anywhere else in the world. Being an authoritarian communist state ruled by a single party where political opposition is banned, censorship is extensive, and the country is both physically and politically isolated from the rest of the world. 
However, the reason why I put Cuba last is because despite the two countries starting from very similar foundations, they've deviated substantially in recent years. While Cuba still holds a largely repressive grip on its citizens, it has also started to open up more and more to the world through both tourism, where locals are now allowed to interact with tourists, and trade, where Cuba can enjoy more and more of the types of goods that the rest of the world enjoys as well. With that said, as of now, Cuba in its current form is still definitely more in the North Korea bucket than not. But who knows, in the wise words of an Eritrean leader, maybe in three or four decades, Cuba might finally hold some real elections and make its way out of being just another North Korea in the world. Honorable mention goes to China back when Mao ruled the country up until his death in 1976. In fact, you can consider Mao's China to be the OG North Korea, except North Korea thought of the brilliant move. Rook takes knight and there is nothing to be done. If you play rook takes, then I take, this is mate, and if you take, then I take, and you go here, and I take, and then I take, and then I take, and then, damn it, I will take literally everything you own. <laughs> Whoops, I meant the move, son takes father's position upon death and copy pastes the exact same brutal government and cult of personality. It's too bad Mao wasn't able to figure out this tactic before he died. Anyways, during the Cultural Revolution, he successfully had nearly a billion people collectively worship him. In fact, everyone was encouraged to spy on each other and report people to authorities if they were suspected of not being loyal enough to Mao and the socialist cause. He encouraged the youth to set up divisions of what he called Red Guards to attack and destroy the four olds. Old ideas, old customs, old habits, and old culture, and order the military to not interfere. These Red Guards would attack and in many cases murder teachers, intellectuals, party officials, and anyone deemed to be against Mao. It got so bad that the Red Guards would start fighting themselves with different factions fighting many civil wars in cities, each claiming to be the only true supporters of Mao, and the military taking sides with certain factions and arming them with guns, grenades, tanks, and other weapons. Absolutely wild. But that's what China was like during the latter part of Mao's life. Again, rookie move on Mao's part for dying and not doing what the Kims did. So now you not only know the three other North Koreas that exist today, but also the OG daddy that North Korea directly took notes from and perfected. Let me know in the comments if you think of other North Koreas that exist, and I might do a part 2 if it makes sense. If you enjoyed my very first video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I spent a long time working on this, and I hope there's at least someone out there that enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions or ideas on what videos to make, please let me know in the comments. I'll be reading each and every one of them. Thanks, and give this a like if you enjoyed.